I highly recommend watching Method 25 first. It forms the basis and explains crucial concepts. This is just a different dimension of that same technique. Method 26. When some desire comes, consider it. Then, suddenly, quit it. Previous technique is mostly about activity. But activity can be anything. This just focuses on desires being the activity. Why? Because we don't usually consider desiring something as an activity. That's why a whole new method is dedicated for that. There's also a difference here in the approach, but we established that in previous video already. We will explain that a bit more here. In some activity, method 25 is about just stopping it. Stopping in itself might imply going against it, which is inaccurate. This is more important when we are talking about desires. When you are asked to stop or quit a desire, the method asks you to consider it. Considering means neither going for or against your desire. Anger comes. Don't say this is bad. That isn't a consideration. Consideration is about recognizing the impulse and not attributing good or bad to it. Just experience the impulse and suddenly stop, quit it. Simple desire comes. Now, you think about what happened in the past, what scriptures say. That isn't consideration, it's an interpretation. As we discussed in method number 25, you were just feeding the energy. Now the impulse became the thought. The earthworm, instead of going back to the center from the desire box, was placed into a thought box and was allowed to come out. The point is, it came out. The goal is to make it come back. When desire comes, just look at it. Don't add your own ideas into it. Actually, most of your ideas were fed to you by someone. Some will say that desire is good, some say it's bad, and you will pick what suits you. Stop decorating desires with black or white. Just consider that desire exists. Use it. So, how do we consider it? Just look at your desire. Feel what's going on with you when the desire happens. If you really feel the desire, you'll see that you'll feel as if you're possessed. There'll be madness creeping in. Don't say it's mad. If you say that, you miss the point. Now, after considering it, stop. Again, don't say this is bad, so I should stop. That's suppression, as we discussed in method number 25. Your psychological diseases are just a result of your suppressions. That is why you hear doctors say, let it out. Let your sex desires out, let your anger out. They're right in one way, because they don't have a way to change the direction of the impulse. But if you don't let it out, the suppression, which is like feeding the earthworm, will make it stronger and bigger, and that isn't good for you. It will have its own side effects, even as physical diseases. If you have considered your desire, it's not difficult to quit it because it's just a matter of creating the blockage for earthworm to not go out and now simply it goes back. But why is it difficult for you? Because you're not considering it. You'll be thinking, oh look, so if I consider it, don't say good or bad, then it will be awesome. You have moved. That's interpretation because now you're liking your desire. Don't like it or hate it. Consider it. Even don't like or hate the consideration. There's something to understand about consideration. Let's take an example. You're angry at your child because he didn't do what you asked him to. You have an impulse. Any thought or statements you make about it is not consideration. It will not help you. You're suppressing it or you're wasting the energy by converting it into a thought process. There are no exceptions to that. After the impulse subsides, you can use your thoughts to consider the impulse. This is a bit yogic way of looking at things. We already discussed about it in method number 25, which is about trying to prevent the impulse. But it's a bit different than the yogic path. Let me explain why. After the impulse dies, if you say, poor kid, I showed my anger, I did a sin, 
I shouldn't do this again. You missed the point. If you say, I showed anger on him for the benefit of my kid, to make him successful, you missed the point. Usually, in yogic path, you would eventually come to a conclusion on good or bad. Tantra handles the same differently. Go deep into the thought. Now, did you really do it for the sake of him? Or the impulse came because he didn't obey you and he touched your ego. Be true to yourself. Dig deeper. The answer you get, no matter how ugly it is, if you have really considered it, then it will reveal itself. If it's your ego, your consideration will be authentic. The next time impulse happens, it will be clear that it's your ego creating the impulse. Since you're authentic, you can look at it just the way it is without any colors. Slowly, you'll see the foolishness in it and that's when stopping or quitting will become easier. Also, don't think about renouncing your desires. This is about considering your desires. Remember that. The renunciation is not something you would do. Once you consider, naturally, such impulses will fall off since you would be at your center. It's like you see that generators are so valuable to get electricity, but once you consider that you're just using them, and once you realize that you are in a power plant to begin with, there won't be any need for generators. You are at your center, the source. If you really want, you will produce the generators. It's not that you kept thinking about abandoning them, it's just that you have no use for them.